Hello everybody, welcome back. Do you enjoy the government all up in your business? Because things are getting crazy, right? We're going to talk about Voyager deal. We're going to talk about Signature Bank. I think that's what it's called. And the government is trying to step in here and stop all this from happening. We'll talk about it. And we're also going to talk about BlackRock CEO touts tokenization, warns US lagging in innovation. You're damn right. And we're going to talk about Arbitrum. Arbitrum is going to have like a airdrop and a governance token now. Check it out. So first, okay. Signature Bank is on the market after being shuttered by state regulators on Sunday. But any potential buyer reportedly has to agree to a major caveat. Can you believe what this is? No crypto. So the government, wow. Crypto is freedom. They're scared to death of crypto. The banks are scared to death of crypto. Can anybody say anything negative about crypto? Or does the blockchain streamline businesses, streamline everything, data, information, it streamlines streamlines everything right there's no excuse not to take on this great new technology the only excuse is well there is no excuse what they're afraid of is freedom right they control all the centralized hubs of information right they hold all the power this has got to change people get in your government's face because even with uh this shit here check it out voyagerbinance.us paused denied by bankruptcy judge a new york court denied the government's request to halt the one billion deal saying delay would harm customers the government is the biggest thing that harms the people always always right get the people you want in power into power sign the petitions you need to sign to get people out of power to get things changed whatever you got to do people that think like you hang on to them grow bring them into power People that like to be like a uh, free blockchain, this is the way to go. People that want to be centralized, Democrat, hide things in Twitter, don't want you to see it. Wow, you've been watching these Twitter file things? The Democrats are the only ones that do not want freedom. Wow, guess not, right? When they're, when they're the creators of the KKK. Yeah, look into that. Democrats have done nothing for no community ever, but they're rich. They're very rich. All right, so we got to stop our government. A $1 billion bid by Binance.us to buy up Voyager's assets should go ahead. A bankruptcy judge ruled in a Wednesday court filing denying a bid by the U.S. government to put proceedings on hold pending appeal. Yeah, they don't care about you. They don't care about those people hurt, right? They're afraid of this technology. They want that shit to stop. So, Arbitrum. Early Arbitrum users determined, determined by an internal eligibility i can't read that early arbitrum users determined by an internal eligibility criterion what the hell is that even a word criterion <laughs> i'm probably saying it wrong will be el eligible to receive the new arb token said off chain labs co-founder and ceo stephen goldfeder ho 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 individual user users will enjoy 11.6 percent of the entire token supply with another 1.1 percent going to other projects built on Arbitrum. Now, where's the rest going? If it's going to them in their pocket, then wow, that's just not right. I'll have to look into that after. I'll get back to you on that one. <laughs> I saw something else here I wanted to just read out to you. The community will have the ability to decide the future of technology and how it wants to license it, he told Dick decrypt if one thing is clear that in the arbitrum ecosystem it's in the community's best interest and in everyone's best interests to be open and free to use and free to modify i think that will spur a lot of innovation yes there you go depending on how many people have that token right we got to take a look at that after i should have dug into that before i read this article oh well <laughs> now BlackRock CEO touts tokenization, warns U.S. lagging and in innovation big time, right? They don't even want people to be whole again with Voyager and none of that. It's crazy. Underlying technologies in the digital assets space could have exciting applications for the asset management industry, according to BlackRock's Larry Fink. Now, these guys are scum too, right? These are the enemy. They have this ESG thing in place. And where was it? What the hell is that place called? Right by India there, right? And they went full ESG and they went bankrupt. Done, right? But they're the number one ranked ESG country, but they're bankrupt. <laughs> it's all more of a form of a more centralized power. Everything is a rich man's scam, right? 
this uh, global warming. Yeah, we pollute. Things are bad. We have to change, of course, right? But the way they want to change is like drastic. They want to take away rights. And I don't know, man. I don't want to be under no 1984 kind of tyrannical environment. I really don't. And that's where it's going, right? So BlackRock chief Larry Fink highlighted the financial headway talking, taking place in some countries other than the U.S., which appears to be falling behind in comparison. I want to say the U.K., they want to be a hub of crypto, and they're making all these kind of regulations, and it's coming up this year. In an annual letter to investors published Wednesday, Fink wrote about rising interest in the digital asset space, asset space over the past year, even though bankrupt crypto exchange FTX really captured the spotlight. He called attention to faster and more efficient payments in India, Brazil, and parts of Africa. India's United Payments Interface, a type of instant real-time payment system, has become a roaring success as it is now one of the most widely used forms of payment in the country. A similar system in Brazil called PIX has evolved the way locals pay. By contrast, many developed markets, including the U.S., are lagging behind in innovation, leaving the cost of payments much higher, he said. Yeah. Fink oversees the world's largest asset manager, which has nearly $8 trillion in assets under management, and he believes the asset management industry is yet to utilize some of the most promising technologies in the digital asset space. Yes, but man, I just don't like these centralized companies, right? They haven't changed the world, and now all of a sudden they're dictating what you got to do to be a better company to change the world with all these ESG rules and things like that. It's just not right. It's, it's, a, it's another form of control. He said BlackRock continues to explore the digital assets ecosystem with a special focus on aspects that would drive the most value to clients, like permission blockchains and tokenization of stocks and bonds. Other prominent financial institutions like Goldman Sachs, Hamilton Lane, and Siemens, is that how you pronounce that, <laughs> have already piked investor interest by undertaking their own distinct asset tokenization projects. In fact, Hong Kong's government tapped Goldman Sachs tokenization protocol to issue its first tokenized green bond. Here we go. This isn't the first time Fink vocalized his thoughts about the potential of asset tokenization. He addressed the FTX blow up at the New York Times Deal Book Summit in December, saying there were some misbehavior of major consequences, and despite the pitfalls associated with the collapse, he said the tech around cryptocurrencies will be very important going forward. I believe the next generation for markets and next generation for securities will be tokenization of securities, he said then. Fink acknowledged that participating in the digital assets industry doesn't come without risks, and said there is a clear need for regulation in the market as it is yet to fully mature. Whew, yep. You know what, man? I don't know. I think big companies like this have to crash as well. They have to get out of the way because they hold too much power, too much control, and they're dictating to the rest of the world who's going to be involved with them. Isn't that what's that saying go? Corruption ultimately corrupts, or power ultimately corrupts? Yeah, power ultimately corrupts, or something like that. I don't know. But yeah, so this guy has like a ton of money. He's controlling things now. He's like shooting his mouth off. And he's this ESG stuff, right? It's not real people. It's another way of control. Man, I wish I remember that country's name that did it and became number one in ESG. And the next thing you know, they're the poorest country, the most bankrupt country. They're done. <laughs> because they don't care about people, right? They care about profits. That's all. They don't care about anything but profits. It's a group. It's a club. And we ain't in it, right? From George Carlin. We have to be, pay attention to these people like Bill Gates buying up the far, all the farmland. And then you hear things like, oh, food shortages? Wow. Getting into medicine? Pandemics? Wow. Right? And it wasn't like a pandemic. It was a controlled move for more power. That's what happened. Don't believe me? Look in the Twitter files. All the doctors from Harvard, Stanford, even the CDC doctor, the head of the CDC, was cast aside when all of them, experts in their field, said, this is man-made. Mm-hmm. And Fauci was like, no, no, we're not going to talk about that. We're going to talk about this. Because Fauci gets paid. He gets royalties. Check it out. He gets royalties from giving companies all over the world money to manufacture or create or study drugs. And then he gets a royalty off those drugs that are created off of that. So he's been doing this for what? Years, 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 years. He's made a lot of money. He doesn't want you to know that that so-called 
what happened in the past couple of years could be his fault. He doesn't want you to know that and that he's actually making money off it. He doesn't want you to know that. So these people, they knew about it. Professionals in their field came forward, but were canceled, silenced. And what do you think is going to happen in the big boys world with people like BlackRock getting more power, right? And these ESG rules, they canceled company countries. They didn't allow companies to take part. You have to go by their guidelines, which is not good, right? Not good. So we have to eliminate and decentralize. We do have to tokenize assets, but we have to make sure it's done right. And we have to make sure we steal that power from them because they're trying to steal our minds, our lives all the time. These people are corrupt. The government is corrupt. The media is corrupt. If, like, if you put a little thought, a little research into it, I've seen hardcore Democrats, hardcore Democrats that just once you start thinking, right, you start thinking and looking into things, they start realizing, oh, that's what the Democrats are doing. That's not what other people are doing. Oh, where's the corruption? Where's the crime? Where's all this? I'm not saying everybody is like on the Democrats and I'm not saying no Republicans, but I'm saying Democrats, wow. They have some kind of stranglehold where they're putting even pornography in the schools to dismantle kids' minds to make them stupid. They're not learning math. They're not learning English. They're not learning history. They're learning some weird shit. Critical race theory, how to hate each other right out the gate. So there's going to be mass fucking disruptions and chaos in the next little while in future when this, when this generation's growing up because they've been taught how to divide and judge and hate, right? So this is a bit of a rant, but there's a war going on. And if you're not aware of it, man, you better wake up real quick. Um, start watching people like Russell Brand. Um, he puts out a lot of facts every day, not just woo-woo theory, conspiracy stuff. It's pure facts, right? Right from the horse's mouth, right from the files of these governments and these corporations, and he's exposing them, right? He has like over 6 million subscribers on YouTube, this dude. Wow. And uh, Joe Rogan, of course. Now, I'm not saying everybody is perfect. Everybody is an expert. But I'm saying, listen to people that want to tell you the truth. Use that information, and we got to use it against centralized hubs like governments. These people here like Larry Fink. Man, it's horrible what they do. Their schemes are endless. We have to fight back. It's a bit of a rant, but there is a war going on. Because if you didn't notice, the government stepping in, stopping banks from people buying banks, and they have the only stipulation, no crypto. Crypto is way better than the dollar. The dollar is fake. It inflates. It's created out of thin air, right? Why do they take the gold backing away from the dollar so they can create it as much as they want and what happens then there's been wars and famine and all kinds of injustices ever since right and it's a hidden tax right because we're paying for that down the road what would cost a dollar this year in two to three years could cost a dollar ten a dollar twenty you don't think much of it but when that tens and twenties are added on even more to everything that's around you they just took like another 20% of tax off you. Just took 20%, 30% more of your income. Gone. Whoosh. Right? So this is the world we live in. We have to fight against this tyranny. And we have to play hard and trade smart. This is the Crypto Realm. Thank you for watching. Hello, fellow adventurers. Are you tired of lugging around those big, heavy, and noisy generators on your camping trips? Well, you're in luck. The Blue Eddy Generator is here to make your life easier and your camping experience more enjoyable. Let me tell you, these generators are game changers. They're ultra portable and lightweight, making them perfect for taking on the go. And don't be fooled by their small size. These little guys pack a powerful punch. You can power up your devices, lights, and even small appliances like blenders or coffee makers, all with ease. But here's the best part. The Blue Eddy generators are super quiet. That's right, no more noisy interruptions to your peaceful camping experience. You can power up your gadgets without disturbing the peace and quiet of the great outdoors. And the utility of these generators doesn't stop there. They're also great for emergency backup power during power outages or natural disasters. Keep your lights on and your devices charged no matter what life throws your way. So why settle for those clunky, noisy, and heavy generators when you can have a portable and powerful solution that makes your camping life easy? In our pinned comments, 
you will find a link to Blue Eddy. Check them out today.